All right, so this here is your bell ringer. Just kind of opening up some things before we get into our work. Again, making sure you copy all this stuff and that you copy it correctly. <clears throat> Remember that we add two to both sides. 5x comes down. Remember that if the signs are different, that they actually subtract and that the bigger number tells you the sign. From there, you divide by whatever is attached to x. Since the signs are different, it's a negative answer, which is negative 2. Hopefully, you're getting better at this stuff because we have been doing this for a while. Um, to me, the solving is going to be the most important thing for you. Again, on this side, 2x plus 4, so you need to move the 4 by subtracting it. Whenever the signs are the same, you add them up. And because the bigger number is negative, your answer is negative. From there, you divide by 2 on both sides. Again, because the signs are different in your division, you get a negative 7 equals x for your answer. Don't forget on this one, whenever the x's are on the same side, you combine your like terms. But in this case, 7 minus 4 makes 3x. Bring down your plus 5 equals 20. And once again, we're home. From there, we just subtract 5 and subtract 5. Divide by 3 and divide by 3. And that is that. Then on the next one here, you have x and 4x. Again, the key here is to remember that x is just a regular x. And so that's 1 and 4, which makes 5x minus 6. From there, you add 6 to both sides. 5x comes down. 14 plus 6 is 20. Dividing by 5, you end up with x is equal to 4. And that is all. All right. The difference between these two again is that in this one x's are on the same side but in this x's are on different sides and so you have to move the smaller x over to the other side by using its opposite so we'll actually use a negative 3x to move it 7x minus 3x is 4. there's that part from there we subtract 4 from both sides getting 4x equals 20 dividing by 4 getting the final answer of x equals 5. On this one, again, x's are on different sides, so we move the smaller x over to the larger x by using its opposite. Don't forget to bring down a negative 5. That gives us 2x here plus 11. Then you subtract your 11, which is what we were trained to do. But notice here both of those are negative, so they add together to make a negative 16. And then from there, you divide both sides by 2. Again, those signs are different, getting negative 8 for your x. This is kind of warming us up for what we're going to have to do um, on our lesson today or in the work that we'll be doing later on. 2 times x, remember that's distributive property, so 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 5 is 10. Bring down your 16. From there, subtract your 10 from both sides, bringing down 2x and 6, and then dividing by 2 to get your answer of x equals 3. So notice this is just like 3, 5, because here you have to combine like terms in order to get home. Here you have to move your smaller x to get home. And in this case, you just distribute and you're home. So as long as you have distributive property down, also making sure you remember that the outside number doesn't matter where it is, it still meets both. So that becomes 3x minus, that becomes 18. And from there, you do what you would normally do. So you subtract or add your 18 because it was negative. 9 and 18 make 27. And then when you divide by 3, you end up with x equals 9 as your answer there. And then 9 and 10 is just making sure we keep in mind where we're going with this. Remember that this is two separate distributive properties. You have this and you have this. And then the last thing we'll do is put our like terms together. So you end up with 20 plus 6x minus 30 minus 9x. Putting your x's together. That to me, negative or 6 and negative 9 subtracts, making negative 3x. 20 and negative 30 subtract, making negative 10, because again, 30 minus 20 is 10. And so that would be your answer there. And then on the last one, remember that this negative distributes to everything, which means we end up with w minus, actually not minus, because that becomes a positive 3w. This becomes a minus 4y, and this becomes a minus 7. And in terms of putting like terms together, the only thing we can put is our w's together, which makes 4w. And then everything else, this has nothing to combine with. And this also has nothing to combine with, which is where that comes from. All right. So after your quiz on Friday, we I gave you a worksheet that has some proportions on it. We talked about what proportions were. We talked about what proportions weren't. And um, pretty much what we're going to do today is the official lesson on it. 
You will need to make sure you copy the um, examples that I get to at some point on the back of your paper. So make sure you're paying attention to this stuff because if you don't copy that, you are going to get a zero. So just make sure you're paying attention. Uh, those of you who worked on the post-assessment worksheet last, saw, last Friday, again, saw the foundation of today's lesson. Proportions are formed whenever you have one fraction equal to one fraction. Uh, these are examples of proportions. You have a fraction on the left equal to a fraction on the right. You have a fraction on the left equal to a fraction on the right. You have a fraction on the left equal to a fraction on the right. Non-examples of proportions are things that we saw before. 2 over 3x equals 7. This, this isn't a fraction, so it can't be a proportion. The other things that we saw... That's not a proportion because you have two fractions on the side equal to a number. It has to be fraction equals fraction. Also, another one that we saw, this can't be a proportion because it's a fraction equal to a number. Now, if you were to put a 7 over 1, now it becomes a proportion and you could do whatever you need to. But the key idea is most of the things we've learned so far are not proportions. Actually, yeah, most of them aren't. But you want to notice how each problem only has, again, one fraction on each side. Even the problem with the x plus 2, the problems are separated, or the parts are separa separated by one fraction line. So it's x plus 2 over x plus 3, which is still one fraction. So we'll learn how to answer this type tomorrow. <clears throat> but in order to solve a proportion, what we'll do is a process called cross multiplication. And it looks just like it sounds. So consider this general proportion here. The first thing you would do is if it was A over B equals C over D is you would draw a line connecting A to D because that would be the first step of your cross, cross multiplication. The second thing you would do is draw a line from B to C. You just created an X which is like a cross. If you turn that sideways they crossed each other. In other words our lines cross. So again this is the general setup for cross multiplication. The only thing you have to do now is you want to multiply each set of pairs. So what you will do is in this problem when you draw your line from A to D, you'll put A in parentheses times D in parentheses and set it equal to B in parentheses times C in parentheses, and that'll set everything up. From there, you solve, and everything else is the same. But the best advice, use the parentheses even though today's work looks simple, because when you get to the real problems later on, like tomorrow, uh, some of the ones you're going to see tomorrow, and some of the ones you're going to see next year in Algebra 134B, it makes a big difference and, and it helps you to not make those mistakes. So go ahead and copy these examples that I'm about to put up here on the back of your notes so that I can see those and uh, go from there. Again, all you have to do here is take x meet 6. So you put x meet 6, just like distributed property with the meetings, and then 9 meets 2. From there, this turns into 6x. From there, this turns into 18. From there, we divide by 6 getting x is equal to 3 and that's all alright here 6 meets 5 x meets 10 6 times 5 turns into 30 10 times x turns into 10 x you need to get rid of the 10 so you divide both sides by 10 getting your answer of 3 Here, 2 meets 15, 10 meets x, 2 times 15 is 30, 10 times x is 10x. Once again, we get the same thing, but it's fine. 30 divided by 10 is 3, 10 divided by 10 goes away, leaving us an answer of 3. So again, be sure to practice these problems uh, on your worksheet. Take them very seriously. Ask for questions when you need. And uh, good luck. Let me explain something real quick on the um, worksheet in terms of what's going on. Because you're going to start seeing this on your work. Where it says, work out each problem, show every step is explained in your notes. Your answers listed as part of the section. So when you do these, this question here, you should be able to see your answer somewhere in here. Two should be down here. This answer should be down here. Then you'll work on the second section. And again, one of these answers should be for four. One of these should be for five. One of these should be for six. Same thing here after you solve, one of these should be for 7, 8, and 9. And then the last one, one of these is going to be for 10, 11, and 12. After that, you kind of get into a decent review or basic review. But outside of that, like I said, just go ahead and get to the work. See if you can get those proportions down, at least understood. I think they're easy enough to do. But again, make sure you practice well so that you have that process down for when things get difficult. Outside of that, I'll talk to you later and uh, good luck.